Let's move on and discuss exercise. Exercise also affects immune function. Moderate exercise of one hour per day for five days a week has been shown to improve the immune system, but intense exercise for two hours or more has been shown to increase the risk of illness. This can be described as a J-curve. Another example of this J-curve response is a study including elite cyclists, recreational cyclists, and sedentary controls. Recreational cyclists had the fewest number of sick days. Sedentary controls had twice as many sick days as recreational cyclists, but elite cyclists had four times as many sick days as recreational cyclists. A 2019 review outlined nine studies where endurance exercise was shown to decrease the number of respiratory illnesses. The workouts in these studies ranged from 30 to 60 minutes and were moderate in intensity, such as jogging. Antibody response to vaccination has been used as a proxy for immune response to exercise. A comprehensive review investigated the relationship between exercise and the immune response to a vaccine and found that in eight studies, frequent moderate to vigorous exercise increases the body's immune response to a vaccine. However, strenuous prolonged exercise did not show as strong of an immune response. For example, Prolonged, intense exercise is unable to boost antibody responses to vaccines like moderate exercise was able to. One study vaccinated 22 male triathletes 30 minutes after completing a triathlon. There was no difference in antibody levels in the male triathletes compared to controls. There are several studies that demonstrate that extreme endurance exercise does not benefit the immune system and can increase the chances of getting respiratory illness. For example, the J-curve study we mentioned earlier found that elite cyclists had four times as many sick days as the recreational cyclists and twice as many as the sedentary group. Other studies have found an increased rate of respiratory illnesses after intense endurance exercises that last at least 90 minutes in length. Shorter duration running events such as 5, 10 kilometers and half marathons did not appear to elicit an increased incidence of self-reported upper respiratory tract infections. Elite endurance athletes are exposed to many factors that could contribute to increased viral susceptibility. For example, they often attend events with large attendance, frequent traveling, psychological stress, potential nutritional deficiencies, lack of sleep, and more. However, when compared to other athletes that attend the same events and have similar risk factors, the endurance athletes still have a significant increased risk of illness compared to, for example, power or speed athletes. There are a couple of proposed mechanisms that might explain why extreme exercise may depress immune function. But before talking about the proposed mechanisms, I think that it goes without saying that extreme exercise, like that at the elite level, is very energetically demanding. Immune cell activation, such as the case when fighting off a pathogen, is also very energetically demanding. It seems very logical that there may be a triaging of the available energy to perform the exercise, since that is being forced, thus leaving the immune system temporarily unable to function optimally without the necessary precursors and energy it requires. All right, with that said, let's discuss the proposed mechanism one. The open window theory is characterized by short-term suppression of the immune system following an exercise. During exercise, stress hormones like cortisol increase in order to maintain adequate blood glucose. These stress hormones could transiently suppress immune function. Shorter exercises may not allow enough time for the pathogen to replicate, but a two hour plus exercise may allow enough time for it to replicate to a critical threshold that the innate immune system cannot resolve. Some argue that the decrease in immune cells after exercise supports this theory, but as we will later discuss, the decrease in immune cells may actually be due to a beneficial relocalization of immune cells from the blood to tissues. So let's talk about mechanism number two. The immune system cannot handle the pathogen burden associated with a two plus hour. While there may be a boost to the immune system in an intense two hour plus exercise, as there is in a moderate 45 minute exercise, the burden on the immune system hits a tipping point that leaves it depleted. In support of this theory is the observation that vitamin C demand is increased in long endurance exercises. For example, six trials involving more than 600 marathon runners, skiers, and soldiers reported 50% fewer colds when supplementing with vitamin C. In addition, a randomized controlled study in 20 athletes in their early 20s who participated in duelathon-like competitions 
found that antioxidant supplementation increased the antioxidant defenses of neutrophils. There has been some debate about whether very strenuous exercise suppresses immune function as a consequence of decreased immune cell numbers. White blood cell numbers have been shown to increase during acute bouts of exercise, followed by rapid reduction in immune cell numbers 30 to 60 minutes post-exercise. The drop in immune cell number can be 30 to 50% less than pre-exercise levels and can last up to six hours. This increase and in sequential decrease sparked the theory of the J-shaped curve. Although many studies have validated the J-shaped curve, the mechanism is no longer believed to be due to the rise and fall in immune cells. This is because the number of immune cells in the blood is not a good indicator of immune response. The increase of immune cells is due to the immune cells being pulled off of the edges of blood vessels by the increased blood flow and pressure. Afterwards, the decrease is due to redistribution of immune cells to various tissues and out of the bloodstream. This has been shown in mice where fluorescent cell tracking showed immune T cell numbers rise during bouts of exercise, but then were redistributed primarily to the lung and other areas like the small intestine. If anything, the immune surveillance is actually heightened during the period where few immune cells are measured in the blood. As a result, the mechanism behind the J-shaped curve of respiratory infection and exercise duration is not due to the number of immune cells in the blood.